Hey friends, it's Ruben with Hi-Fi MIDI. Thanks for joining me for another video. This is part one of my review of Steinberg's Iconica Sections and Players. This is a review of their Woodwinds section. And I was going to do the whole library today, but um, as I started uh, going over the, the different voices and features, I decided that it would take too long, um, probably over an hour to, to go through everything. Uh, so I wanted to do it part by part. That way I could go a little deeper into the the different features. Um, that way you could make an informed decision on whether this is worth the, the cost, whether this is the library that you're looking for. So just a um, brief description of this. Iconica is made by Steinberg. They partnered up with the creators of Orchestral Tools. And if you don't know uh, about Orchestral Tools, they are an incredible sample library company. Um, in fact, uh, they they have some of the best string and woodwind samples I've I've ever heard. But they uh, they also require lots of RAM, um, powerful computers, and they're they're targeted toward toward people who are, who are creating film scores or video game scores. Um, but they partnered up with Yamaha or Steinberg and created this sample library that is has a smaller footprint and but it has a beautiful sound to it and i want to go over the woodwind portion today so uh iconica uses steinberg's free halion sonic se player now if you don't know what this is this is uh as i mentioned in my last video this is sort of like contact player it's it's not contact but it's it, it functions similarly and you can load all your li libraries into here and you can access them anytime. Uh, you can load them onto 16 channels and you can mix them, um, transpose them, set them to the same MIDI channels or separate MIDI channels. And you can mix them here. You could add effects. Then you have your edit window that actually shows the uh, the sample library that's being used, that's loaded. So as I mentioned, this is a woodwind review. So I'm going to go over the different instruments. We have bassoon, contrabassoon, clarinet, and it should have bass clarinet in here, hopefully. Yes, there you go. English horn, flute, and flute comes with flute one. Flute 2 and Piccolo. And then you have your oboe. And within these menus, you have different presets. And these presets have, um, they they all have access to the same, the same samples or same articulations, I should say. But they have them preset in different orders. So they focus on, on uh, certain notes or certain articulations. So I'll open up the flute instance I have. And here we have our, our layout. Right now I have flute one and it has uh, six articulations loaded. I'm going to go through those really quick and play them for you. So this is staccatissimo, which is very short notes. It's a very beautiful sound. Uh, it's very soft. And staccatissimo is set to where uh, it, it's vel velocity sensitive. So if I hit it hard, I get a fortissimo. If I hit it soft, piano. And watch how this icon right here gives me feedback uh, telling me what my dynamic is. Of course, it has round robin. So I get a different sample every time I hit. So that way I don't get that machine gun effect. When you have round robin on, you use more samples. So that means that you use more memory. If you turn that off, if you can turn that off, um, you would use fewer samples, but you'd get that machine gun effect that is uh, undesirable in, in orchestral music. All right, let's hear staccato. Your basic short notes, and then marcato, which is sort of like an accented note. If you're just joining me, 
I see your comment. Hello? Your sustain. So sustain is actually going to be... Um, the dynamics are going to be dependent on the mod will, but they can also be changed to velocity. So this doesn't have vibrato on sustain. And then we have legato. That does have vibrato. And then we have a cool one called repetitions. So the way this is set up, you can change these via key, key switching. So you see um, on my keyboard, I'm pressing different keys and it's switching articulations. You can actually change these articulations. You can change the order by clicking on um, select articulation right here. And then it opens up a new menu and it has these different articulations. So um, right now I have staccatissimo. Let's hear, oh, we do have a sustained vibrato. Uh, let's let's hear forte, forte piano. So you're gonna have loud and then soft immediately. And then swell long. So this is gonna get start off soft, get loud, and then get soft again. Now that's a nice articulation to have, but I noticed when I played it that even when I let go, some of the notes kept on holding on, and that's um, that's not good when you're programming. You see I let it go, and it's still playing. So over here on the bottom we have our type of release. This is called true release, enable true release. So I'm going to uh, disable that and it's going to release it based on, um, I think based on my tempo. Hopefully this works. No, that's still holding on for some reason. So that might be a little bug in there. We have our trills. Uh, this is a whole note trill. So lots of these articulations are your standard, um, are your standard orchestral. So you're gonna find, you're gonna find this in a lot of orchestral sample libraries. And um, the difference is how they play and how, how good it sounds. I guess is what it comes down to. And then uh, we have our, so whole tone, and they should have half tone trills. Yep. All right, I won't go through all of them. But as I said, you can change the order. You can change the quantity. So add articulations. I, won't, I don't know how many they'll let you add. I think it's eight. So that, that seems pretty, pretty reasonable. Uh, another thing you can do with this, and I mentioned this in the last video with the um, Iconica ensembles, is that you can actually layer articulations. So hitting this plus button is going to add a whole row. And you can set it in three different modes. So layer, switch, and fade. So layer is going to play them at the same times. So for example, if I have staccato here, I'm going to load that real, really quick, and then maybe a um, forte pian or sustain. So now I'm going to have staccato layered with sustain. So you hear that initial attack. And then you hear the sustain below it. Another way that you could, another a mode is switch. So this is going to be based off of your velocity. So if I hit it softly, um, 
it's gonna it's gonna trigger the the bottom articulation. So sustain. Let's see. Oh, actually, um, right now it's set to controller, so um, I can I can switch it through controller. I thought it could switch to velocity, but let me let me try that again. There you go. So right here you have the option of velocity. Let me go back to that sustain. So right now it's set to my my lower notes or my lower velocities are triggering the staccato. You can set the threshold. I'm not sure how you do that. It's not um So the higher velocities are triggering the sustain. I'm sure as soon as I figure out how to change the threshold on that, like the velocity number, then it would make it more useful. So the other way is to fade it. So this one is using, I think this is similar to it. So you fade into from one sound to the other, the other, it just switches. All right, I'm going to change that. Now let's go into the mixer window. You have different micings, so if you turn this on, it's going to use more samples, so that it's going to increase the sample count. However, the, the depth of the sound is going to be a little bit higher. How about use the expression on this plugin? Yeah, I'm using the expression through the uh, mod wheel. So let's hear that really quick. Turn that off. So it sounds a little further away. Now really quick, really quickly, um, I wasn't really impressed with the legato on this, uh, this particular flute sample. Let me, I'm going to reload this flute standard. Um, I'm going to open, I also have a, an instance of Vienna Instruments Pro. I have Vienna Symphonic Library, but I want to show you the, uh, the way the flute sounds on here. Just for comparison, the legato on um, Iconica sounds a little bit like there it has too much release on it, and I can't, I can't fix that. So let me, let me show you what I'm talking about. So here's Iconica. It doesn't sound terrible. It just compared to this, the the um, legato is a lot truer on Vienna. And you could even hear the key clicks. And this is only taking up. 66 megabytes whereas um, I only have one two three four five six articulations loaded and it's already taken up 730 uh, I wonder how many let's compare really quick so I'm gonna load the legato and that's taking up It's already at 490 megabytes, so this is taking up a lot of RAM. Oops, that was Vienna. I was like, that sounds really good. All right, another uh, cool feature, and this is with Halion, is that you can actually layer the instruments 
So I have my flute two, and then if I wanted to open up flute one, and maybe even layer a piccolo there. I don't know if I have to wait for it to load. Let's try this. Piccolo standard. And then I'm, I have to go to my MIDI track and make sure that these are all in the same channel because um, otherwise it's only going to be triggering flute two. So channel one, channel one, channel one. Now they're all going to play at the same time. And then I can raise my piccolo to be an octave higher. When you uh, when the piccolo is playing an octave higher, you could uh, it cuts through the orchestra a lot better. That sounds really cool. All right, I'm going to unload this. And let's listen to the other ones. So we have bassoon. Very, uh, very dorky sounding instrument, but also it's uh, capable of some very beautiful sounds. Oh, the, another thing was that I have this installed on an SSD and the transfer rate is about 600 megabytes a second, which is pretty fast or maybe megabits, but it's, it should be loading a lot faster than this. And I, I don't know why it's taking so long. Gato. So I think this the repetition repetitions are dependent or locked to your tempo. So let me let me see if I change the tempo, will the repetitions change? Sounds like they did. I'm gonna set the tempo to about sixty. Yeah, so it sounds like this is not a sample of an actual repetition, but it's the engine doing it. The engine is is uh, locking it to your your DAW, which is not bad. But if you get to certain speeds, I wonder how it sounds. Yeah, <laughs> I, I figured it would not sound realistic. All right, so this is pretty much the same setup, and I would venture to say that it has the same articulations available, or at least most of them. And most of these are going to be used. Uh, these are going to be your your essential articulations. All right, let's listen to another instrument. So the contrabassoon is just a lot deeper than the bassoon. Uh, clarinet, here's another popular one. So they have clarinet one and two. That's good. That way you can get different sound characteristics. Again, this takes a long time to load. Sorry for the wait. 
This is uh, this is really frustrating. I don't know why it's taking so long. One thing I look out for is to hear if you to see if you can hear the uh, the transitions from piano to mezzo piano to mezzo forte to forte. So far, this sounds pretty smooth. Although I can hear a uh, tapering right there. Hi, Rafaela. Here, legato. I, d I don't know how it sounds to you, but I can still hear that little tail end of each note kind of bleeding into the next. And I'll show you um, what I what I think it should sound like. So this is Vienna Instruments Pro, and I'm gonna load the. B flat clarinet legato. Now listen to this, and you'll hear some of the notes bleed into each other. Now, I've seen some companies do this where they'll create this false legato by um, making the release a little higher so the notes the notes keep playing just a little bit, just long enough to connect to the next note. Now, the sample itself doesn't sound bad to me. It sounds good. It's just the, the transition from note to note doesn't sound as clear as, let's say, let's say uh, Vienna Instruments. Close that. Let's listen to, to some other instruments. English horn. This is one uh, that's kind of hard to get because of the characteristic of the sound. It's very nasal, but it's such a beautiful instrument. Let's load that really quick. And while that's loading, I'm going to load uh, the English horn on here as well. I feel bad for doing this, but I, I think that people should have a reference uh, to what a, a good library sounds like. So let's let's hear this. So English horn usually plays really slow passages, romantic things. It's a very pensive sounding instrument. Not bad, but not great. So let's hear uh, VSL for comparison. Now that one doesn't sound, it sounds a little too, too choppy. Let me, let me hear English horn too. Now that the one's not great either. <laughs> oh, 
All right, so I'm not I'm not too impressed with with either. Um, I think I've only found one really great sounding English horn, and that was from uh, or orchestral tools. All right, next sound. Oboe. This is a, this one is in the same family as uh, as English horn. It's basically a higher English horn, or the English horn is a lower oboe. It has the same nasal sound characteristic. Uh, it cuts through the orchestra really, really well, but it's also very hard to find a good sounding oboe, even with VSL. Uh, I'm I have to say that I I'm not happy about it. It's a particularly hard instrument to play, anyway. So here is here is Iconica. Any day now. Now that is using a lot of vibrato. That's better. Let me see if they have legato with no vibrato. And they don't. They just have sustain with vibrato and sustain without. That's a shame. That one sounds expressive. It's just the transitions between notes that I don't like. All right, oboe two. Let's hear the second oboe. Tick tock, tick tock, tick tock. All right, that's still oboe. That's still the other one. Hey, David. All right, here we go. How's it go? I need the music in front of me. Let's hear Vienna. See the legato on here is a, that sounds a little bit too hard. Let's hear oboe two. That sounds really nice, actually. Back to Iconica. Now, mind you, this one this one sounds further away. So there, there's a little tail. There's some reverb mixed in. Uh, let's go back to it, and uh, I'm gonna get that close sound. How many expressions do you need for an oboe in a DW? How many ways to play it? Like you played staccato, if I'm not wrong. Oh, it, the, uh, David, that all depends on the type of music that you're playing. Um, normally, it's just sustain and um, sustain and a good staccato that, that uh, most people use. However, if you're getting into um, film scoring, you want different articulations. 
let's see. Let's go back. Um, it depends on the instrument too, like like uh, flutes and clarinets are going to have a lot of repeated notes, so repetitions are going to are going to be good. Uh, instruments that play a melody, you're going to want legato in there, uh, so it can sound smooth. Marcato is not often used with uh, it, it's with uh, woodwinds, probably more with with uh, brass and strings. That actually sounds really good, but it sounds um, sounds broke, <laughs> baroque. So I think we've covered all the woodwind instruments, uh, bassoon, clarinet, English horn, flute, oboe. So here's my take in summary. The, sa the samples are, are beautiful. They, uh, they're not harsh. Some sample libraries, they sound harsh right out of the box. So you have to EQ them. Like some of Vienna instruments samples sound a little harsh. Um, and I have to soften them, take out some of the mids. But this one is easier on the ear. Um, I like that it has different mic settings, so you can mix the sound. You can um, you have your close mics, your tree, you have your ambient mics, your surround. Um, it gives you a good number of articulations. Like most of these are going to be enough, um, unless you're getting into some really like like classical music or something where it's going to use. Uh, or m like more modern type of classical music where it's going to have unique sound effects. Um, you're going to, this is going to be enough for most people. Now, Iconica sections and players costs $800. Um, for comparison, Vienna special edition, which has most of these same articulations and um, possibly more, more instruments that's about fifteen hundred dollars so twice as much um don't quote me on that price though for vienna it's been a while since i purchased it but so this might seem i it seems like a good a pretty good deal considering the fact that it, it sounds good you have a lot of customization options for um for how you access the sounds but there are some things that I don't like about it, such as the legato and the fact that uh, you can't hear the key key clicks on the instruments. So it, to me, it's not as detailed. Um, also, the samples take up a lot of RAM, a lot of memory, whereas Vienna uh, doesn't. Um, Vienna takes advantage of, of their engine, which changes a sample every time you play. Um, check this box right here. You see how it gives you a different iteration of the sound so that no two sounds are exactly the same. So you don't get that machine gun effect. So this is only 61 megabytes. However, I think this might be an option here where you can purge the samples just like in contact. So uh, save, save on your RAM. Um, but I haven't found it yet and I'll Probably I'll try to find that for the next video because that would be that would be great if you could purge the samples. Well, anyway, um, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, and if you haven't done so, please subscribe for access to more videos and hit that notification bell. Um, there is a link in the description for PayPal and Venmo. If you appreciate what I'm doing and you'd like to support my channel financially, you can click on those links and donate, and leave a comment below. Tell me what you like about this uh, about this software. And if you think it's worth it. Well, friends, thanks for joining me. And I'll see you next time for part two, where we'll be going over the string samples. Take care.